this time we remove the last bit of interior to find a 1000 gallon diesel tank, a water tank and the drainage from the chain locker. And as always with such big projects, some other surprises. And we will find out if Flying Cone is actually the biggest ship on YouTube. The big task for this year is to get the hull fixed from the outside. We hope this could be achieved by good pressure wash and a little bit of paint. However, when we hauled out the boat, we discovered a very severe corrosion damage. So now we are facing a labor extensive, very expensive and extended time in the shipyard. Hello, I am Barbara and together with Daniel I try to bring this neglected steel ship back to life. This time we will remove the last remaining parts of the interior and the fossil. It is not quite well built, so a hammer and a crowbar will be fine for most of the jobs. I know we already did a lot of destruction, but this time is really exciting, because we will dig out our water tank and our diesel tank and I'm really curious in what condition they are. Before we start into the video, I want to thank all our supporters on Patreon and Paypal. Your support makes this project and the videos possible. If you want to get more involved in this project, it would be awesome. I'll leave a link for you in the description. And now let's bring you up to date. So far, we ripped out the galley, all the interior from the saloon and underneath the aft cabin, and removed a lot of dusty old cork insulation together with some frames. Then we called in an expert who discovered a very big hole, but we decided to continue this project anyway. And while Lucas was repairing the hole, we continued with massive destruction and cutting open a tank from hell. So what's up next? The fossil is the last part of the hull where we still have interior. And now it's time to remove it. And somewhere behind all that interior has to be a water tank, a diesel tank and the drainage of the chain locker. And we have no idea where exactly all that stuff is and in which condition. So let's find out. Originally the plan was to leave all this in place because there was no need to remove it but now we have another hole right here and therefore we want to know in what condition the forward part of the ship is before we go back into the water because finding a hole on land is always better than finding one when you're in the water. So now it's time to remove the last interior of our ship. I guess most of you remember when we were searching a leak just to find out that our water tank is broken. That one is actually the working one, even though it looks quite rusty. But this wall here is broken and since that tank used to feed in the other tank, we slowly emptied 500 gallons of water into the bilge each time we filled up our tanks. And now let's continue with the destruction. A little box. box right here, that one. But more about the box later. And now let's talk a bit about Flying Coney. I have to tell you something. Before we took Flying Coney out of the water, we had no idea how big she was. I mean, we knew all the numbers and that, but we had no clue what that actually means. I think the best illustration is to compare her to other ships here on YouTube. 
As far as I know, there are three other big ships. Brubeck, the Australian steel trawler, Java, the Brazilian wooden schooner, and Serinda, the British World War II vessel. And for all of you who want to write a comment about the Aurora project, let's be honest, it's not a ship project. The plan is to build a floating hotel, not to bring it back as a cruise ship. We like to watch Brubeck because it's a steel ship and we always thought if Damien can bring this ship back to life, we can do the same with Flying Coney. And then we realized that Brubeck is only about 57 feet long. So all the smaller fishing vessels next to our ship, well, that is Brubeck. Java has a length of a spars of 88 feet, but that is with the passing platform and the bowsprit. When we add Davids and the bowsprit, Flying Coney will be over 100 feet long. What a frightening number. The biggest one is Serinda, almost 72 feet, but the draft is only 4.6 feet. We have almost twice as much. And that means much more hull area that can rust, that has holes, that needs paint. Overall, even more work. And I'm not just saying that to brag. Well, probably I do a bit, but mainly to demonstrate why some tasks seem to take forever. So I think we can safely say Flying Coney is the biggest boat project here on YouTube. But on the other hand, steel is less work than wood. But what do you think? Let me know in the comments. And now let's see if I manage to get the fossil done without breaking my neck. It would be it. 
Bad idea to make a mock up. A mock up is bad. I guess pun intended. This is bad. A waste of wood. Nice color, might be even mahogany, painted over everywhere in white. A shame, a real shame. So it's very easy to get it off and it will fall off and there will be rust everywhere. Rust, 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 or oh, heck. It's falling down, so. Turn it around so that the nails are on the ball and not sticking up. Okay. I have to be a little bit careful that I don't Don't what? Put my hand on a screw, but I didn't. We are just about to find another surprise, but first let's put it into perspective or otherwise you think that flying cone is scrap. We believe in her fishing days this part here was used for nets or the anchor chain, in any case it was open to the elements and something rubbed against the hull, because this part here is quite rusty and worn and all the rest of the fossil looks quite okay. With that in mind, let's have a closer look. Ready guys? Okay, so now, we'll 
Excuse me. Not again. Just to show it to me. We have another one. A bigger one. There's not just one. There are two. Oh, you have not seen both. No, okay. I just saw there's more one up there. Okay. Now there are two. Oh, nice. Okay. Guess what? We found more holes. Over here are two tiny holes and you cannot see them from the outside. So we had to come up with a solution. In the night we will put a flashlight in here and have a look from the outside where the light shines through. You know, this thing is a multi-purpose screwdriver. But only for getting them out. And that's why. It's the last piece. It's the last piece of the interior, yes? No, not completely. Oh, and it's gone. What's this? That's the roof of the chain locker. And now let's find out how big this tank actually is.
So this diesel tank is just above 1,000 liters, which translates into roughly 300 gallons. And if you are still here, I guess that means you really enjoy watching our videos. So I have good news for you. Here is a playlist with all our refitting videos and I strongly recommend you go watch them right now. If you are already binge watching our videos, here is the next one. Of course, only if there is already a newer one. Otherwise, it will be the first video of our playlist. So thank you so much for watching and see you next Sunday. Yes, we decided to switch our publishing schedule to weekly videos. Bye!